Mr. Ken Hensley. Yes. <laughs> you were born just after Second World War. Yes, correct. <laughs> That's correct. 24th of August. Yes. In London. Yeah, I was born in London. I lived there for 11 years and then I moved out of London to go to school. What, what kind of district in London were you born? I was born in the southeast of London. Um, just south of the River Thames and a little bit east of the centre of London. Was it a working class uh, part of the city? Most of London was working class in those days. Anywhere in East London, whether it was North East or South East, was working class. All, all of the middle class people lived down in the West End of London. Okay. Um, I've uh, read some interviews, but I don't know much. How about you? Uh, your mom and dad, uh, what kind of family did you grow up in? Well, it was a working class family. I mean, my, my mother actually didn't work. She was a mother and a housewife. And my father was in the Royal Navy for 16, you know, 12 years. And then he left when I was born. And he worked in a factory in London, or just outside London. And he worked until he wasn't able to work anymore. My mother and father were both musicians. Okay. My mother was a pianist and my father sang and played the harmonica. And um, so there was always music in our house. It was you were not really influenced by uh, your parents in musical? Um, well, I think that if there's anything genetic about <laughs> music, then sure, there was definitely an influence, but it was more by genetics than anything else. There was okay. always music in our house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, I'm the oldest of uh, four brothers, and we also have a sister. So, yeah, it's a fairly big family. <laughs> okay. And you have contacts? Uh, Sorry? You have contacts with other? Uh, All the time, yeah. All the yeah, time. Yeah. I, I see them five or six times a year. I either go to England or they come to Spain. That's great. Um, I've also often asked myself, um, how do Kenneth write songs? Well, it's a gift from God. Um, God brought me into the world to be a writer. And that's the job he gave me, and that's what I do. He inspires me, and I write it down. And uh, it's all, it just, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so it's my purpose on earth is to, is to write music. And, uh, and you know, obviously, the, the real reason I'm here is to glorify God in some way or other, but he's chosen to do it through music. So many of my songs are based on my faith and other songs are not, but they are all from the same source. So um, I hope my songs are an encouragement to people and I hope that they are um, inspirational to people. Um, they're certainly not mine, they belong to whomever listens to them. Well, you said would be a big inspiration to me because I maybe I tried to play piano, which I've done <coughs> some. Um, but I saw you in, in the Uriah Heap, and well, that's a good uh, image. I saw you good at writing songs, you're good at playing. I started to, to not as good as you. <laughs> that doesn't make any difference. I, I, I'm, I'm not the judge of that. No, no, but, but, uh, but uh, having fun. Uh, that's, uh, so. so it was a positive influence. Yeah, it's a positive well, that's, because, uh, that's the most real, important real, thing. Real, real good, uh, influence. There's a lot of responsibility comes with writing songs and with selling records and, and singing to millions of people. I mean, there's a big responsibility there. And if it's an influence at all, then, then one hopes that it's a positive influence. I mean, that's, to me, the most important thing. Hmm. Um, I, do you, do you remember anything about when you wrote uh, Easy Living? We had just finished a long, 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 long session in the recording studio and there were three of us in a taxi going home very late at night and um, we were having a conversation about how people outside think that being a musician is so easy. They think it's an easy life. Uh, they think you show up, you play, you collect the money, you go home. And we were laughing about it because it's not an easy life at all. But the words easy life stayed in my head 
when I got into my flat, I sat down at the piano and 15 minutes later the song Easy Living was finished. And uh, so it's really the inspiration came from a conversation in the taxi and then, but the song of course doesn't repeat the conversation, it goes somewhere else. It's a very interesting thing to hear. Always wonder about it. I don't want to know well, many, many, of, many, of, many of my songs have stories to them, and many don't. Um, many come from just moments in life, or things I see or hear, or that happen, um, and somehow they become a song. But other things, it's just pure imagination. So, I just my mind is open, and it just comes and then goes out, and then it's done. That's good. And it looks like uh, you haven't lost your creative creativity. No, I'm okay. writing more now than ever, actually. But I think that's probably because of where I live. Um, uh, I live in Spain in a very remote place. It's very quiet. And so the, the noise of the world is not there. I don't have to listen to cars and um, people or anything. My mind is completely free to create. So I'm writing more now than ever before. And I'm very happy about that. And we, we are very excited what's going to happen here in this like, uh, tonight. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> you too. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some from the Norwegian Philharmonic, yeah. Yes, there's ten string players from... I think it's the Oslo Philharmonic. Oslo, yeah. yes. Right. Yeah, and they're great players, so that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, s some uh, songs are uh, written by Hensley, Box, Fire and Kerslake. Other other are written by Fire and Box, Kerslake, Hensley. Why is it uh, mixed up? Uh, is it no no partic no particular reason? It's just the yeah, okay. way it came out. There there is really no particular reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. I as I understand that you. Got two friends in the band, Gary Thane and Dave Byron, who passed away in 1985. And you were also heavily, heavily into drugs. Yeah. Are you lucky to sit here? Well, I think God had different plans for me. I mean, um, David became an alcoholic and never recovered. Gary had a problem with heroin. Unfortunately, it got the better of him. Um, my problem was cocaine, and uh, if I have one regret in my life, it's ever getting involved with drugs. That's the biggest mistake I ever made. But um, I haven't had a problem for a long time, <laughs> 20 years or something. But um, it was the biggest mistake I made, and you know, I felt for that the, the, there is a lie that goes with drugs, which is that you need drugs and nobody needs it you know you need drugs when you're having an operation or something but you don't need to take chemicals or stimulants or anything um, anyway uh, I fell for the lie and, and for 16 years I was addicted to cocaine and then one day I just stopped I think maybe I was about to take my last hit of cocaine and God said okay I think I better get involved because he may kill himself so it just I just threw it in the toilet and I never touched it, wanted it, nothing since. So You could talk to a thousand addicts and they'll tell you that it's impossible to do what I did. So I know I didn't do it, I know it was divine intervention. But I would say to anybody, don't, drugs are impossible to stop, so don't stop. That's the best thing. Uh, were, were you a Christian at that time? Or what happened? I was, I was brought up in a Christian family. I knew something about uh, the gospel, I knew a little bit about the Bible, but in school I was taught to fear God. I was never taught that I could have fellowship with Him. I was never taught that I could be friends with Him. I was always taught to be afraid, be very afraid. Or He would come and beat me up with a lightning bolt or something. Um, of course, since I became a Christian in 1993, I understand now that He's the best friend anyone could ever have. And so um, I decided that the best place for my life was in his hands and that's where I put my life and uh, I'm real happy with that situation. So that's a recommendation? Absolutely. I mean, who would, 
say no. I mean, you, you, you can be forgiven, you can have Jesus and, and God as your best friends, and then you, you get to live forever. I mean, why would anybody say no to that? I don't understand. <laughs> No. But I'm not, I'm not a preacher, and I, 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 I am, I suppose, an evangelist in some way because I do make no secret of my faith, but I'm not, I don't beat people up with the Bible. I don't, that's not my job. My job is simply to live my life in a way that honors God and, and maybe will introduce people to the idea and then let the Holy Spirit do the rest of the work. At least as I understand it, that's what I'm supposed to do. So that's what I do as best I can. Thank you.